Today we're doing an RCSB breakdown video to learn how to do the voice of Stewie. Stewie Griffin. I say, Brian, are you done licking your anus quite yet? Be because you know what? I'm going to be a superstar. And I can have a dog indulging in self-gratification in front of the audience. I say, fat man, bring us some chocolate milk for my guests. Top shelf! None of that Nesquik brand nonsense. <sighs> hello, hello again. Welcome back to Character Voice Building with me, Nando Garza, and I am here to help you build and develop better character voices. First of all, as you can tell, I'm a little hoarse. I got sick a couple of days ago. <clears throat> and I'm not quite better yet. Um, so anyway, we'll get to this one. This one is very fun. This is, of course, a character that has been with me and many of us for such a long time. It's a, such an iconic character for, for me, at least. And uh, it's really fun to do. This one is actually very complex. It has lots of elements very well utilized. So there's lots to go through. So uh, before we go, this is, again, an RCSB breakdown. This is a rounded character speech blueprint that is a framework that i created of 18 elements across six different categories to really break down a voice into its most basic elements that you can tweak and work with if you need a refresher on how to how to work with that there will be a playlist up above that you can check of all the breakdowns of each of the individual elements so without further ado let's get into stewie griffin Let's begin with the feel category and with the aesthetic element. The aesthetic is very lyrical, determined, fast, uh, and I kind of define it as that cow moo toy thingy. You know what I'm talking about? It's that thing where you, they had some holes and you turn it around and it's like, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that later when we get to the mechanics. But it, it is. Uh, uh, it's something in the back of the, the, the tongue. Uh, uh. So <laughs> that's how I define it. Then we have demeanor, <clears throat> which is the kind of person that the character is or wants to appear to be, maybe at odds with the aesthetic. And it's intelligent, calculating, grandiose, refined, sophisticated, eloquent, and articulate. All those things that are associated with this little smartass. <laughs> so let's move on to instrumentalization uh where we start with the mechanics this probably does a lot of the work i wouldn't say most of the work because there's lots of elements that are very prominent in him as well but mechanics is definitely one of them uh which is mechanics is the physical technique how to produce a desired sound the way i describe it is a little bit like holding a marble in the back of your tongue against the back of your throat and then having your mouth shaped kind of like a tube including your lips so let's go through that first that marble in the back of the throat what does that mean if you imagine like you had uh just a marble and you tried to like move it down your uh, down your throat through your tongue and if you just kind of push it back it's when it gets to the back that's kind of where you it feels like you're nestling it there a little bit so uh, that's where it is it's way back there Ah, ooh. it also kind of helps if you're kind of pushing your tongue up like that. You're, you're not really applying, applying tension or anything like that. It's just kind of moving it forward a little bit and almost arching it in the back. Difficult to explain, but that's the best way I can do it. Like holding a marble in the back of your tongue. Ooh, ooh. And then you have the mouth <clears throat> shaped like a tube. You don't always have to do it, but having this kind of 
general posture, like having just a cylinder straight across helps a lot. So when you combine the uh, with the, this, you get a much easier Stewie Griffin. So there we go. Um, then we move on to the tonality element, which is the bass pitch or range. This has varied a lot along with other elements throughout the series history. It started off pretty high, and especially in the resonance, and we'll get to that, but it really changes. But now, the way it is now, it's a very wide range uh, with, it, it tends to be sitting at a resonant mid to mid low, which is kind of surprising, but poking into the higher register often varied through the series again so uh brian so nowadays what seth mcfarland does he sits in that kind of mid to mid low region region oh brian i don't know what to do uh, ooh. so it's kind of low really um so that's where it sits but brian uh, like hi hi say hi it's pretty high so it is a very wide range and something that i learned from taking uh british rp accent classes which we'll get to again um uh, is that that kind of accent uses inflections like tonal inflections much more than we do here in the states so when they want to give emphasis to a word, they raise the pitch. So, I went back to him. I went back to him. So, th they use it a lot. I'm exaggerating it a little bit, but that's the idea. But, that, but, that's, the idea. but that's the idea. That's the idea. There we go. God. Let's move on to the musicality element, which is the variance in pitch and rhythm. It's very musical. It's so beautiful to hear. Um, it, it, it's musical in a kind of fast classical type of way is the best way I can describe it. It's kind of like Paganini, if you want to look it up or if you, if you know who he is. He has this super fast violin lines, but they're very expressive. They're super fast, followed by like long held notes with good vibrato and stuff like that. It's beautiful. It's very much in, in pitch and rhythm that it has that kind of musicality to it. Uh, it is very expressive in both areas. A portion of this is due to his posh uh, British RP accent, which I had just talked about with that going up and down. Uh, and also, it's just natural musicality. It's very pleasant to listen to. So in a fast classical Paganini type of, type of way is the best I can describe it. Then we move on to resonance, which is how full or thin a voice sounds. This is probably what has varied the most over, over the years. The pitch has, you know, gone through that as well, but the resonance has really been there. If you listen to the very first episodes, Stewie, Stewie is, is much more higher than like this. It's kind of like the larynx, the larynx is higher higher to make it thinner to make it more childish more like a baby really but it would it isn't until later several seasons later that he gradually started going down and just settled into a more robust resonance tone it's much fuller now so the way I would describe it is it's full, but it's curved a bit because of the mechanics used to make the sound. It comes from a chest voice and is modified by the tongue and the tongue posture and the mouth posture. So, again, it is Seth MacFarlane has a very resonant chesty voice. Um, or, yeah, in his regular speech. So if you take that and you add the mechanics and stuff in the air then you lose a little bit of that uh, resonance, but it's still there. So, yeah. Then last in the instrumentalization category, we have dynamics, which is the range between the lowest and highest points of loudness or emotion. Uh, it's very dynamic, for sure. In regular speech, he maintains a pretty steady dynamic range, 
but he can easily go very, very loud uh, given his situation and can also get very quiet as well when needed. So he really utilizes the entire spectrum of the thing. On to the texture category. We start with grit, which is the amount of lower vocal distortion or really vocal fry. Uh, it's used sparingly uh, to add some texture to certain times, particularly when he uses his lower voice in like a calm tone. I, I, I've heard him say a few times like, oh boy, boy. So that that's utilized there it's not really present in his normal speech but he does use it as kind of an accent texture thing just to make it a little bit more fun and interesting then we have distortion the amount of upper vocal distortion um it's pretty clean generally unless you know when he's high intensity reactivity moments those are do, are accompanied with some sort of like s just screamy distortion basically it's basically what would come naturally if you just talked very loudly <laughs> if you just screamed so yep that would be distortion and then on to air uh, which is how much audible air is present in the voice uh it's pretty breathy not all the time but it is pretty breathy it comes and goes it's not present 100 percent of the time or maybe even most of the time but it is certainly used so there's a lot of times where he's just talking like oh i have no idea what i'm going to do so there's not a lot except for that to do okay or brian there's a lot of air in that. So he uses it both. Again, it's not just one static thing, which is one of the most beautiful things about this voice. It changes so much and it keeps it engaging. It's very fun to listen to. So air is very important for the, this voice. It's not there all the time, but it's, you can certainly use it at times to really punch it up to give that Nice, beautiful, refined kind of sound. On to the momentum category, starting with the speed element. Uh, this is basically how fast the character talks. And he's a fast talker. So let's leave it at that. <laughs> then the flow, the next element, is how interrupted a sentence or thought is. He has a very musical flow again paganini that kind of like it's very musical in that way um he goes fast and then suddenly slow for a certain words i say brian da 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 what the devil are you talking about da do, 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 do. Listen to Paganini and you'll know what I mean. On to the second to last category, localization. The accent. This is a fun one, of course. This is basically an upscale British RP accent. British RP stands for received pronunciation. It's basically what the higher class are educated to talk to. To talk in... Is that how you say it? I don't know. So it's very much that. There's a lot of aristocracy in it that kind of flair that's in there <laughs> then enunciation how clear or muddled the speech is it is very clear which is very nice he can talk very fast and in a different accent but we can still understand every single thing that's being said which is marvelous i i can't quite do it as fast as he can because it just gets muddled. It's very impressive how he does it. Then last for localization, we have inflections, the modulation uh, of intonation or pitch throughout a sentence. It generally tends to follow the general inflections of the British RP accent, really is what it is. There are some common traits uh, outside of that, but I think if you follow the general British RP musicality, that kind of inflection, you'll be good to go. Last category, dimensionality, where we start with reactivity, uh, which is how a character reacts when startled, amused, scared, etc., etc. When scared, he gets kind of low and rounded. I can't quite do it right now because I'm sick, but if you look at the clip where he 
finds Chris's Hustler magazine and he gets very freaked out and starts shooting it. He screams in a, it's fairly low, which is very interesting. It's not like what you, you would expect a kid to do. Like, ah! it's very low, which is very interesting. Uh, when tickled by something, his laugh is very childish and silly. He's like, <laughs> that kind of thing. It's kind of all over the place. It's very sweet. Um, when he's annoyed, he kind of tends to go down and pitch, that kind of thing. Uh, when he's fantasizing, he goes up, you know, Brian, how's the novel going? You're writing a novel? You're just trying to, to be a writer? In terms of... No, that's exaggerating, but that's a good example of it. And there's so many others to do, but it's difficult to really pinpoint exactly which ones. You just have to watch a lot of Stewie to grasp those. But it's it, that's part of why he makes it such a rounded character. It's so fun. Second to last element, we have quirks, which is pronunciation of certain phonemes, such as the lisp or trill. Uh, the one that stands out is really, he does it on purpose to annoy Brian. And it's the quirks. Quill Queen, that kind of thing that really annoys him. He does it on purpose, but he does it every now and then, you know. And he does random things like that, like yogurt and saying yogurt. It's yogurt intentionally to annoy Brian. So there's a lot of intentional things like that. In terms of his regular speech, uh, probably the only thing is a very slight kind of uh, maybe a lisp. Samuel Adams. The S kind of tends to be, I don't know, again, not the tip of the tongue, kind of farther back. Instead of, it's very, very subtle, but it's, it is there. And it comes and give, gives him more of a childish feel. So it's very sophisticated, but there's that little bit of still childish uh, quirk. And for the very last element, we have ticks, which is non-language sounds. Uh, he does some sporadic ones according to the situation, but there is no real recurring ticks. So that's that. Thank you so much for being here with me today. It was a pleasure to have you. If you can, please like, subscribe, and share with anybody who might fi find this helpful or entertaining. It really helps the channel. And yeah, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I would love to hear what you guys are up to. If you have any impressions that you're doing, any, any new characters that you're coming up with, let me know. You know, put it in the comments. I would love, love to check them out. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Take care. Be kind. Take it easy. And we'll see you next time.